This video was made possible through a grant from the Haas Corporation. The Geek Group would like to thank Haas for their continued support in helping encourage innovation in design and manufacturing in America. The Geek Group proudly features ISCAR tooling in all of our workshops, videos, and hackerspaces around the globe. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Iskar Rick. Welcome to the Geek Group. Today we're going to take you through the very basic on and off procedures for the Haas VF2 milling machine. Now a lot of the things that we do in this particular video will apply to just about any Haas CNC milling machine. So it's really not that complicated. This is really simple stuff for just how to turn it on, what you need to know. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is before you turn the machine on, you have to have a proper air supply connected to the machine. The details on this vary by different makes and models of machine, but the important thing is that you have clean, dry, plentiful air. So you're going to need a proper air compressor. Make sure you have the right capacity in your air compressor that's measured in cubic feet per minute. So that's CFM. And make sure that it is clean and dry. For our big facility here, we've got the big giant air compressor in the other room and an air dryer and all kinds of plumbing and all that stuff. So that's sorted out. Um, you have to make sure you have the right power. That depends on the machine. Um, our machines run on big three-phase 480 stuff. So you've got the air, you've got the power. What's the next step? It's the first thing you do. We're going to turn the machine on. Okay, this is thrilling, <laughs> difficult stuff, but it's things people need to know. So how do we do that? Uh, the big green button that says power on. Okay. And then the machine will go through its diagnostic and, um, and self-diagnostics. Power on self-test. Yep. So we get this, which is the lawyer screen. Yep. So this, this will hurt you. <laughs> and it hisses at you occasionally. Right. Well, too. that's the air dryer okay. on the machine. Yeah. So this is, the, this is the lawyer screen. Don't hit any buttons, just let it do its thing. Let it do its thing. Um, when we power them up, we have the emergency stop on. Yep. So you turn off the e-stop like that. You just rotate it and then hit reset. And that's going to clear out any of your alerts and all that. Um, when it comes up, you're either going to get the message screen or the mode status screen. This is the, the standard mode status yep. screen. Um, if you get a message screen, the, it's possible to leave messages, like the, the guy working first shift can leave a message for the guy coming on second shift. Um, if you can't clear out the messages, it usually means you need to call your local Haas factory outlet because something's wrong and you need a guy, and they'll send a guy out and sort that out for you. Um, so reset to clear alarms, and then the next step is power up restart. Yep. Okay. So power up restart is the button right next to the reset button. They make it easy to find for the reset button. It's bright orange and huge. Next to it, you've got one that says power up restart. So what is this going to do? That's going to fire the machine up. It'll turn on the servos and zero out the machine. Okay. It has so, to have a reference point. So zero, what is zeroing out the machine? The machine will actually move to a, a hard stop limit switch. Okay. That's very precise. It says this will be home position. So it's going to move every leg. In this machine, I think it goes down and to the left. Yeah, well, it'll move both of them um, simultaneously until one of them runs out of axis. Okay. Now, to be able to show this, I'm going to turn the lights on inside. There's okay. a button over on this side that lets us turn on the lights inside the machine. That's nice. And yeah, it's kind of, it's, I, I like that. That's yeah. a, a rather new feature. So we hit power up restart yep. and everything's going to move. Yep. All right. Here we go. So the first thing it does is takes Z all the way up. Make sure we don't run into anything. Yep. Then it moves X and Y. And now we're there. We're going to be there. And then it's going to put a tool, and put number one tool in the, in the spindle. Okay, so it does a tool change. And if there's one in the carousel, it'll load it. And if yes. there isn't, it'll just do an empty tool change. That's correct. Okay. So we're now homed. We're powered up. We're restarted. Everything's good. Yep. The machine is on, ready for its next command. Okay. So at this point, we're good to go. Yes. Now, what's the opposite? What's the proper way to turn it off? Uh, the, set it, the shut it down, it would be, it would be a power up. It would be a power up to send everything home. Okay. This wasn't at home when we fired it up. Okay. And then we're done. It's um, emergency stop. And, and well, before that, take the tool out of the spindle. Take the tool out of the spindle because mm -hmm. um, it's good practice to take the tool out of the spindle if it's been working all day. If there's not a shift following behind you, the machine works and like people and horses, they sweat. Okay. And if you leave the tool in there all night, over time, the tapers on the tool and your spindle will get, uh, get uh, slight rust, spots, things that aren't things aren't good. Okay. So take the tool out every night and let it air dry. I've heard about a thing called like spindle lock or something like that where if you leave a tool in there it can get stuck. Yes, it can get stuck. Why? 
uh, from the, the coolant. The coolant will go in there and it actually acts like a glue. Okay. And when the, when the drawbar goes to release, it'll be stuck and you'll actually have to tap it and pop it out and it pops out with, with force. You better be hanging on to it because it's going to kiss the table. Could this be also a, a, a thermal process? Oh, where... definitely thermal. Okay, yep, so yep. it cools and everything contracts. And hangs onto it. Okay, Yep. and that's why it jumps out because yep. it's, it's trying it's, to squeeze it out. That's a physics thing. Okay, cool. Yep. Well, I'm a physics guy. So All right. Okay, so to turn it off, take the tool out of the spindle. Yep. And power up restart. Yep. Now that's going to put the table where it is right now, sure. way over to one side. That's fine. That's okay. That's fine. It can it's, sit. That's, it's, it's, leave it. It can park for the night. Even though it's it's like no, nope, it doesn't hurt. It's a not, thing. Not it doesn't problem. hurt. A okay. Thing. Um, so you power up, restart it. Yep. Hit the e stop. Yep. And then and good night. That's it. We're done for the day. There you go. That's easy. That is the basics on the very basics. How to power up and power down your machine safely. Don't worry if it feels like it's kind of complicated. You're going to do this a million times, and I promise you will memorize it, and you won't even have to worry about it in the future. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Miss Car Rick. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible in part by Mastercam, whose CAD CAM software provides the base to all code generated for Geek Group CNC projects. The Geek Group would like to extend our deepest gratitude to the Gene Haas Foundation for making this program possible. Thanks to their generous contribution, we are able to train and inspire machinists all around the globe. Operating the CNC machines in this video risks personal injury and mechanical damage. Hazards may include electricity, untrained operation, airborne toxins, flying debris and noise, fire and explosions, poor shop upkeep, sharp tooling, projectiles, loose clothing, inadequate clamping, automatic operation, automatic tool changer, unsupported bar, over-tightened steady rest, lack of enclosure, and impact. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.